we're seeing people in, in being indoctrinated to believe that creationists can't be scientists. There's experimental or observational science, as we call it. That's using the scientific method, observation, measurement, experiment, testing. All scientists, whether creationists or evolutionists, actually have the same observational or experimental science. Now, Mr. Ham and his followers have this remarkable view of a, a worldwide flood that somehow influenced everything that we observe in nature. A 500-foot wooden boat, eight zookeepers for 14,000 individual animals, every land plant in the world underwater for a full year. I ask us all, is that really reasonable? You'll hear a lot about the Grand Canyon, I imagine, also, which is a remarkable place, and it has fossils. And the fossils in the Grand Canyon are found in layers. There is not a single place in the Grand Canyon where the fossils of one type of animal cross over into the fossils of another. In other words, when there was a big flood on the Earth, you would expect drowning animals to swim up to a higher level. Not any one of them did. If Bill Nye and I went to the Grand Canyon, we could agree that that's a Coconino sandstone in the Hermit Shale, and there's the boundary. They're sitting one on top of the other. We could agree on that, but we would disagree on how long it took to get there. But see, none of us saw the sandstone or the shale being laid down. There's a supposed 10 million year gap there, but I don't see a gap, but that might be different to what Bill Nye would see. But, but see, there's a difference between what you actually observe directly and then your interpretation in regard to the past. We're, we're talking about the past when we weren't there. We didn't see those tree rings actually forming. We didn't see those layers being laid down. It's like the dating methods. You're assuming things in regard to the past uh, that aren't necessarily true. The fundamental thing we disagree on, Mr. Ham, is this nature of what you can prove to yourself. When people make assumptions, they're making assumptions based on previous experience. They're not coming out of whole cloth. I encourage you to explain to us why, why we should accept your word for it, that natural law changed just 4,000 years ago, completely, and there's no record of it. Natural law hasn't changed, as I talked about. You know, we, I said we have the laws of logic, the uniformity of nature, and that only makes sense within a biblical worldview anyway of a creator God who set up those laws. And that's why we can do good experimental science, because we assume those laws are true and they'll be, they'll be true uh, tomorrow. We build models based upon the Bible, and those models are always subject to change. The fact of Noah's flood is not subject to change. The, the model of how the flood occurred is subject to change, uh, because we, we observe in the, in the, in the current world and, and we're able to uh, come up with maybe different ways this could have happened or that could have happened and, and that's part of that scientific discovery. You cannot ever prove using uh, you know, the, the scientific method in the present, you can't prove the age of the earth. So you can never prove it's old. So there is no hypothetical. <laughs> what we want in science, science as practiced out on the outside, is an ability to predict. We want to have a natural law that is so obvious and clear, so well understood, that we can make predictions about what will happen. And the big thing I want from you, Mr. Ham, is can you come up with something that you can predict? Do you have a creation model that predicts something that will happen in nature? 